Okay, so today I'm gonna to tell you guys the story of the time I had a job offer rescinded. And there is a moral to the story, so if you're interested on what you could possibly learn from something like that, then keep watching to the end and I'll get around to my big takeaways from this experience. Okay, so just to contextualize this a bit, I went to coding bootcamp in 2016 and finished towards the end of the year and began applying for jobs. And one of the jobs I applied to was at IBM in their design practice. So they have a practice focused solely on design that has front end developers, designers, UX researchers, and I thought that sounded really cool. But these jobs were only available in a few certain places. So Austin was one, Raleigh was one, and there was maybe one other place. And so I applied, had a few rounds, and things went really well. But ultimately, we got to the point where they were ready to move forward, but they didn't have a need where I am here in Raleigh. And so we kind of hit pause on the process at that point. This is probably in January 2017. At that point, I started looking for other jobs and ended up taking my first like real full-time job, which is what brought us here to Raleigh in the first place. And so I ended up working in this job starting in March 2017, and it was in the public sector. It was a pretty good first job to have. I've talked about it in the past, but it was dealing with a lot of legacy technology. There was a lot of non-programming work to be done. And so ultimately, after probably six months, I knew I wasn't gonna stay there long-term and started to think about, okay, maybe at like the year mark, that'll be long enough and it'll be time to move on because I wanted to keep learning. I wanted to learn in-demand skills and and keep working with the more cutting edge technology that I learned in bootcamp like React. And so I was kind of already thinking about moving on when I got an email from IBM. Now this email was around Thanksgiving and basically it said, hey, you are back in the game. You are invited to San Francisco, but you need to let us know like in the next week. And if you're in, then we'll send more information about how to book travel and all this stuff. And basically what it's gonna be is kind of a three day long interview process where you're gonna do all this stuff. And at the end, you will find out if you get to join or not. And so I thought this whole design practice part of IBM sounded so cool. And so I decided to go ahead and go for it. Now, the tricky thing was, this was gonna be like December 3rd, 4th, 5th. And so I was gonna have to take vacation from my job and not only take vacation, but take it on extremely short notice, really close to Christmas. So. I felt like it probably would have looked really suspicious, but I ended up kind of just saying like, hey, I need to take off and I took the three days and that was okay. And then I had this experience where I called and booked travel completely for free through American Express Travel, which I didn't even know was a thing. And that was really crazy and interesting. And what made this whole thing even weirder was that it was a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday. And I would fly back Wednesday night. And so I felt like probably this whole thing is gonna start to look a little bit suspicious in terms of work. But I was so excited about this opportunity, I just decided to go for it, even though it was close to Christmas, even though I hadn't really planned on it. And so we got the travel booked and it was all ready to go and I went. So I went to my local airport, got on a Virgin Air flight, which I didn't even really know was a thing, my first time flying Virgin Air, and flew direct to San Francisco basically overnight. So this was like on a Sunday night, I flew on a red eye to San Francisco, got there Monday morning, got on a shuttle that IBM had arranged, like met a bunch of other people, that were going to this event. It was kind of like going to summer camp, it was weird. So I met all these other people like in the airport and on the shuttle. And eventually this shuttle deposited us in downtown San Francisco, but not before we went past all these like famous landmarks and we went past a bunch of tech offices. So we went by like the Zynga office and the Mint office. And my mind was just like, basically exploding because for someone that works in technology, this was like the Mecca. This is where the big players are. This is the place that's known around the world for technology. If you wanna work in technology, like this is the place, or at least it was at that point before everyone left to go to Austin. But my mind was basically just exploding. I couldn't believe I was there. It was my first time in San Francisco and I essentially couldn't believe my luck. I thought, this is unbelievable. So the shuttle deposited us at a hotel in Chinatown, and uh, basically we were there day and night for three days going through this interview process. And so basically what it was is that I was put on a cross-functional team with a PM, a designer, and a couple other developers, and our job was to build an MVP of essentially what would be 
like a flight application. So like, let's say IBM wanted to get into something like Google Flights, their version of that. And so we had a designer mock stuff up. I was kind of the front end developer. There was another developer who was kind of the back end developer. And what was interesting is that this was like for entry level jobs pretty much across the board. So a lot of the people I was working with were in college or just finishing up like a grad program or something. So that was really interesting given that I was already in my first job, but I had a great team and we worked together really well. And kind of the culmination of that was that we went into a room and pitched this thing in front of a bunch of like hiring managers and recruiters and took questions from them about our process. And I was like kind of stressed the whole time. Like I was thinking like, are we gonna get this done? Are we gonna have a working prototype? But what we ended up doing worked and it was fine. And we got great feedback from the panel that we interviewed in front of. Now, after we did the whole panel interview, we had some free time. So we went and got Boba like as a team, which was really fun. I had some free time just by myself. So I went to Coit Tower, which whenever I see pictures of Coit Tower, I think about this trip and just like how crazy it was. But San Francisco, it was early December, but the weather was just perfect. I still remember that like light breeze kind of coming off the bay and just beautiful and sunny. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe where I was. I couldn't believe this was my first time in California and that it seemed like I was going to maybe get an offer at this place that I really wanted to work at. So everything went well. We took the shuttle back to the airport to SFO and I took another red eye on Wednesday night all the way back to Raleigh. I had to play it cool. So I basically got in at 6 a.m. my time. I didn't want to take another vacation day. Didn't really feel like I could. And so I went to work, basically not having slept the whole night because I can't really sleep on planes. And so I went back to my job. I was waiting kind of with bated breath and I eventually got an email probably two weeks later saying, Peter, we'd love to jump on a call. This was from a guy that I had been talking to, like one of the main recruiters and he said, hey, do you have like 10 minutes to talk? And I was like, sure. So like, just call me whenever. So I basically like ran from my office outside to take this call, like went into a parking garage. And basically what this guy told me was, hey, we'd love to make you an offer. The offer is gonna be $83,000 with a $10,000 signing bonus, which I think is pretty incredible. Keep in mind, this is for a completely entry level position. They're basically treating me as if I was coming right out of college. Not only was this over a $20,000 a year, raise, but it also had this $10,000 signing bonus. I've never been at a company that offered a signing bonus since then or before. Like, it's just not a thing in my world. I know that's a thing in big tech, so that's cool, but I've never really had that. So basically my mom was blown by this offer. I was overjoyed. I was so ready to get out of my job because I had convinced myself that I was miserable, which is a thing that I'll touch on in a minute. Don't do that. Um, but basically I was amped. So this was in mid-December. And so basically the only thing we were waiting on at that point was the official written offer and to sign everything and to get everything squared away and get me commuting on up I-40 over to uh, what's called in our area RTP, which is Research Triangle Park, which is where a lot of the big tech companies have offices. IBM is no exception. So they have a big campus about 15, 20 miles away from me. But what ended up happening is that I wasn't hearing anything we were getting closer and closer to Christmas break and eventually my regular work broke for Christmas. Catherine and I went to her parents' house so that was our first Christmas married and I was basically waiting with bated breath yet again for the real offer to come through like refreshing my email constantly just waiting waiting waiting. Sent a couple follow-up emails and their response was basically oh we're working on some things we're trying to figure a couple of things out and I was thinking like the longer time went on, the less good it was actually looking. And my hopes were still up, but my hopes were also starting to kind of come down and it was a really weird spot to be in. And I enjoyed our Christmas break, but I don't think I enjoyed it quite as much because I was worried about this offer the whole time. But we'd told like all our family basically that I had this offer. And so one of my brothers-in-law even got me an IBM hat for that Christmas. And so I had this kind of hat sitting around, wasn't sure if I was actually gonna be able to wear it at any point. And so so by the end of Christmas break, I still hadn't heard anything. We went back to Raleigh and I had to go back to my job and I wasn't thrilled about that. 
And basically, I think I sent one more email and I was like, just let me know, you know, kind of what's going on. And I eventually got an email back and the main recruiter guy and uh, one of his colleagues that I'd also been in touch with was like, hey, we'd love to get on the phone again. Like, can you call us at this time or can we call you, you know, 15 minutes at two o'clock or whatever. So at this point, I went to a coffee shop down from the office I was working at and took their call. And essentially they told me that some business needs had changed and they could no longer offer me a position. Now the guy was pretty kind about it, but I still remember uh, his colleague who was a woman was pretty unempathetic, I would say. So she just said, hey, look, business needs change. Like we can't tell you anything else. And so uh, not only was I really disappointed that the offer was coming through, but I was kind of hurt by this kind of like curt nature of just not really being too sympathetic about it. And I was really disappointed because during this recruitment event, there'd been like all these hype videos and stuff about really getting you excited about working for IBM. And it kind of felt like not only was all that crashing down, but I was stuck at my job. And so what ended up happening was that I never worked for IBM. I went and worked at an agency and then I worked at another agency, which is where I am currently. Now in the first agency, I was subcontracted out to a big Fortune 500 company. And I learned during that experience that I'm not a big company person. I didn't really enjoy it. And IBM is one of the biggest employers in the US. It has 400,000 employees. And so if I extrapolate from my experience at the first agency, I think it's pretty safe to say that I would not have enjoyed in the long term working at IBM. I really don't wanna be a cog in a vast machine. I like having impact like pretty directly. I like having autonomy and control over what I'm doing and not kind of being dictated to from huge layers of management like Russian nesting dolls all the way up. So I know that might be an oversimplification of big companies, but I do think there's a fair bit of bureaucracy in large tent companies. And so in a lot of ways, I feel like I dodged a bullet there. So what are the takeaways? I think there's two main takeaways that are pretty important. Number one, a deal is not done unless the papers have been signed. And so I made the mistake of thinking like, hey, uh, they made a verbal offer. And so basically we're good to go. Told our family, you know, got the IBM hat for Christmas and everything. And it wasn't done. There was still a lot up in the air. And so I would say until an offer letter has been officially signed and probably till you start your first day of work, it's not done. Uh, I've heard of offers getting pulled even after the signature, like before the first day which at that point I think is really reflects poorly on a company and is probably not a place you want to work for anyway. But the moral of the story is it's not a done deal until it's a done deal. And I had to learn that the hard way, but it's a lesson I take with me wherever I go now. It's always in my mind, even before I have the job that I have now, I didn't want to tell anybody about the offer until it had been signed. And we did it that way. We didn't tell our family or anything. And so I'm much more cautious about offers now. The second thing is about this thing called a bat no, which is best alternative to negotiated agreement. So basically what that means is that your leverage in a negotiating situation is kind of like what you will do if the whole thing falls through. So that's what the best alternative refers to. So for a lot of people, the best alternative to getting a new job or being to negotiate an offer for a new job is going to be staying at your current job. But if you've convinced yourself that you're miserable at your current job, then your BATNA isn't very good. And so one mistake I had made or an additional mistake I had made here is I'd gotten to a certain point where I had kind of written off my job, not for bad reasons. I don't think I think a lot of my reasons for being frustrated with my first job were valid. But uh, when you've convinced yourself that you're miserable at your job, you're going to be much more likely to take anything else. And so I would say to the fullest degree that you're able, don't convince yourself or don't tell yourself the story that you're miserable at your job and that it's terrible. Try to be open-minded and look for the good because that's gonna ultimately gonna help you take a better job for you. You're not gonna be likely to just take anything to get out of your current situation and it's gonna help you negotiate a stronger deal. Now, there are exceptions, right? There are actually terrible jobs out there, but for the most part, I would say most are not so bad and so you want to do your best to look for the bright side in those jobs. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you can learn from my mistakes. Have you had similar experiences? Have you had job offers pulled? Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested to hear what people's experiences have been in this domain. Let me know if I missed anything. Let me know if you have questions. Let me know if I can be helpful. Thanks for watching to the end. If you liked this and you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel. So consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.